I would like to ask everyone to gently settle into your chairs. Softly close your eyes and prepare to take one deep, connecting, expansive breath with me. Inhaling, filling up completely all the way to the top. And just pause there and feel that expansive stillness within you. And exhale, just let it all go. <sighs> Notice how you all softened into your bodies in just one breath. Just one breath can have a transformational impact on thoughts and feelings in the moment. Just one breath. The healing powers of breathwork have been used by countless cultures in as many countries around the world for as long as people experiencing the human condition of suffering have been in search of higher meaning and self-healing. Breathwork has been the bridge between body and soul and sickness and health for thousands of years. But many of us in today's fast-paced cultures have lost touch with this idea of breathing to thrive. Most, if not all of us, breathe to just barely survive. For the majority of my life, all I've ever done is breathe into the very upper portions of my chest. This autonomous breath to just survive. Never once did I breathe with the intention or focus to thrive. The majority of my life has been pretty rocky, just like it can be for so many of us. When my mom was seven months pregnant with me, my older brother drowned in an unfortunate accident. He was just over a year old. So I came into this beautiful world experiencing the same deep grief and sadness and overwhelming sense of loss that my loving mother had experienced from the moment she discovered she lost her first son. My dad was recently back from multiple tours in Vietnam and suffering from his own severe post-traumatic stress disorder from the horrors and tragedies of war and the emotional devastation of losing his first son. Things were pretty rocky in my family environment as a child. I grew up in a constant state of rage, anxiety, and depression. We moved to 10 different towns in different states by the time I was in the fifth grade. So I struggled making and keeping friends. My parents divorced when I was about 12 years old, and at the age of 14, I discovered alcohol. And the effects it had on me kept me drinking and drugging until I was 35 years old. I was actually arrested 17 different times for different alcohol-related citations by the time I was 25 years old. I know, I was a bit of a slow learner. <laughs> the law just didn't seem to understand that all I was trying to do was have a little bit of fun and escape the me that I didn't like being. I graduated from Oregon State University in 1999 and seeking warmer climates, moved to San Diego, California. I quickly found a job as a construction project manager for a mid-sized development firm and climbed the ladder of success. I got married, I bought the home with a view, I started saving for my financial future and everything was on the up and up. In 2007, when the real estate market collapsed, I lost everything I had gained down there. I lost the home, the marriage, the income stream, and most importantly, I lost my sense of self. And things just kept getting worse and worse. I began drinking and drugging nonstop in an effort to hide from the reality of the situation that I was in in life. One night in a deep blackout at the age of 35 years old, I attempted suicide. When I came to the next morning and I realized what I had done, I felt this deep, overwhelming sense of fear and I knew that it was time to completely change my life. That very morning, I checked into outpatient rehab, I walked through the doors of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I just spent the next 11 months living in San Diego by myself, working on me in this new commitment to a life in sobriety. At the end of that 12 months, I knew in my heart that it was time to move home. So I packed up what little I had left in a small U-Haul trailer and headed north to beautiful Bend, Oregon. And I've been on the sober and healing journey ever since that terrifying morning, almost nine years ago. One morning, about two years into my sobriety, I pulled up to my favorite morning Americano stop to grab my cup of coffee. And the friendly barista saw me wince in pain as I could barely reach my arm out of the window to grab my beverage. She looked at me and asked what was wrong, and I said, oh, I got this bad back, it had been haunting me forever, and this morning was just especially bad. She smiled at me with compassion and suggested I go do yoga. Yoga? <laughs> me? Yoga? Yoga's for guys who wear Birkenstocks <laughs> and listen to the Beatles all day. I am not a yoga guy. Thank you, I'll take the coffee and go. She handed me my change and bluntly said, don't be a tool, go do yoga. 
I'm a fly fishing whitewater rafting guide, a steelhead chasing junkie, and a custom home builder. And well, I'm everything that yoga is not, I thought to myself as I drove away. But I also realized in my heart that I was sick and tired of being mostly sickish, sore, and tired all the time. And I also knew what I had been doing and what I was currently doing wasn't, wasn't working. I wasn't happy, joyous, and free on this path in life I was on. So the following morning, I checked into my first one and a half hour vinyasa yoga class. I snuck into the back corner of the room. I didn't utter a single word to anybody. I prayed to God nobody would, would recognize me. And I gave it all I had. That first class kicked my ass. I almost blacked out twice <laughs> with reoccurring thoughts of, I'm freaking dying here. How do you even do this? What'd you just say? And who are you people? <laughs> I managed to make it through the first class. I didn't walk out in frustration. I didn't run away in fear. Matter of fact, within 30 minutes, I knew I was right where I was supposed to be. What I experienced in this first class, the grace, the flow, the friendliness, and most importantly, the energy. And what I heard this teacher sharing was unlike anything I had ever heard, felt, or experienced before up until that point in time in my life. In the final pose called Shavasana, we were asked to lie down and, and connect to the stillness of our breath. Something inside of me moved, and I began to cry. In a room full of people I didn't know, in a place I had never been. What the hell is going on? I screamed to myself in silence. But I decided to continue to lie there and let whatever it was just happen. And in the final moments of that last pose, I settled into the stillness of my breath for the first time in my life. I crawled out of there, awed, perplexed, and committed to return. I began to go three to five times per week after that. I wanted what they had. I wanted change. I wanted transformation in my life. And I began to hear the word breathe repeated over and over in class after class. And I've since discovered that everything in life and yoga and love and happiness is about connecting to the breath. So I would like to once again ask everybody to gently settle into their chairs. Release any tension that you're holding. Softly close your eyes and begin to inhale, filling up completely all the way to the top and feel that beautiful stillness within you. And exhale, just let it all go. About three years into my yoga and meditation practice, I got an email from one of my favorite yoga teachers inviting me to do a breathwork class. Breathwork? I'd never even heard of such a thing, and with my curiosity level on high, without any further thought or investigation, I decided to go. When I got into the room that night, the guy leading the class, who is now my teacher and dear friend, asked me, have you ever done breath work before? I looked up at him and responded, yes, I meditate every day. He looked back down at me and said, well, good. This is a little different than your seated meditation practice. So once we get started, just lie on your mat, breathe as instructed, breathe with, with as much effort as you can, and be willing to let some of your shit go and you should be okay. I looked back up at him and thought to myself, okay, weirdo, whatever. How hard can it be to just lay down and breathe? There were about 30 people in the classroom that night, and he began to explain how we were going to breathe, that we would breathe through our mouths and not our noses, that we would fill up our abdominal cavity like a balloon, and then top off at our chest, and just softly exhale. And that's all we had to do for about six songs or 25 minutes. Again, this all seemed really easy and doable to me. I mean, how hard can it be to lay down and breathe? He also explained that the more effort we put into the breathing, the active breathing part of the class, the bigger the payoff would be at the end. And that we had to be willing to set an intention to let some of that stuff that we carried that no longer served us go. So the lights went off, the music came on, and we all began breathing. Within just a couple of moments, I began to feel the oxygen moving throughout my body. I felt cold in some places and warm in others. My legs, my arms were tingling. My hands did these really weird claw-like things, just like he said they would. In the middle of the class, he asked us all to scream. And what came out of me was the loudest, deepest, guttural soul roar I have ever experienced in my life. 
it came from someplace I have never been. I then started shaking and then I started crying and then I realized the whole room was crying and it was in the depths of this letting our shit go that I felt this overwhelming sense of compassion for everybody around me. And I realized that we all deal with the hard edges of life, that we all carry pain and suffering and that we're all way more alike than we are unalike. And I also realized most importantly that I wasn't alone. In the final moments of that first class, he led us into several heart opening moments and we were able to focus on all the things and people in our lives that we loved and were grateful for. And I felt my life change on the mat. I honestly felt pure love and true gratitude radiating from this body for the first time ever. I came out of this class with a knowing that I had discovered what I'd been in search of for the majority of my life. This means to let the dark, heavy energy that I carried and all of the things that kept me in suffering go. You see, I'm used to kind of living a life that looks like this. I'm pretty much curled up. I've always been protecting the old heart hurts, the past heartaches. The, I've wallowed in the relationships of past financial failures, relationship failures. I've hid behind all the self-defeating beliefs that I've carried about myself that have kept me stuck with who I've always been. In the experience of this first class, I understood that that's not who I was and that's not who I am. I got home that night in a state of, once again, awe, wonder, and curiosity, and I decided to make a commitment to me and my breath. I did this breathing practice every single day for 70 straight days, and my life will never be what it used to be. In a little less than 90 days of breathing, I was able to step off of anxiety and depression medication that I've been more on than off for over the past 25 years. And I have not had to sit in either one of those daily nightmares and suffer in over a year. Do I still get uptight at times? <laughs> yes, I do. Do I sit and stew and stuff I shouldn't? Yes, I do that too at times. Have I reverted to the old me? Yep, I have. But I know whenever I revert to old thought or behavior patterns, all I have to do is go home, lie on my mat, and breathe for transformation. I'm not perfect and neither is my practice. But fortunately, I'm not trying to be. All I'm really trying to do is be a little bit better to me and all of the people that I hold near and dear in my heart today than I was yesterday. And practicing this healing form of breathing has drastically improved the quality of all of the relationships that I have in my life. This past August, I was asked to be a fly fishing guide on a magical spiritual awareness trip on the Middle Fork of the Salmon River during the week of the solar eclipse. When the trip host and yoga instructor discovered that I was in training to be a breath coach, they asked if I would lead a class for their guests on this special trip. Without any hesitation, I said yes. To see these beautiful souls lie on their mats on one of the most beautiful banks on any river in any state and breathe, to see them step past some of their old fears and find light and love and courage and heal in some small way, in this first class, is something that I will hold near and dear and cherish for the rest of my life. I know that this breath work has improved the quality of my life drastically. And I know that if it can help me overcome 40 years of suffering and anxiety and depression, if it can help me step past all of those years of self-defeating beliefs of saying I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, you don't deserve, and find love and gratitude, that it can help anyone. I am blessed and honored to help facilitate the journey of those in, in search of discovering their best selves by doing nothing more than what was shared with me when I needed it most, the gift of transformation through breathing. So I would like to once again in closing, ask everybody to settle into their chairs, release any tension that you're holding, softly close your eyes, and take the deepest, loving, fullest breath you can. Inhaling, filling up completely, pausing at the top and just feel that loving stillness within you. And exhale, just let it all go. Feel free to open your eyes. Namaste.